Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I'm going to keep playing around with our CSS grid template or layout and try out a few new CSS properties. So I've got this layout that I created before, and it's nothing fancy. The HTML is simply one div container filled in with 36 div grid items, and that's creating a six by six grid because each column is one fractional unit. And I just used auto for the uh, grid template rows. Now, to really focus our attention, I'm going to pick on one particular um, cell in here, one grid item. Let's see, I'm going to just pick on a grid item in child number three so that we can really see that. Background color, HSL, hue saturation light, hue saturation light. 200, 100%, and let's do 50%, and that'll make a nice shade of blue. Okay, so there it is. We can see it pretty darn clearly. It's that one particular cell. Now, we can have this work with grid column start. I'm gonna start at three, I'll explain that in just a second. And grid column end, I'll end it at six. Okay, so what do those numbers mean? Those are the grid lines, and you can actually see it starting to work. But where do we get three and six? Well, our grid lines start on the very far left with number one. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven would be the far right edge of my sixth cell. So those are the grid lines of that first track, that first row, okay? And then similarly, I can do something like grid row start with one, which is where it's already starting by default, and I'll do a grid row end of three. And now we're creating one big cell um, that's spanning, uh, looks like three tracks across and two tracks down. Okay, so what happens if I did a grid column end of seven? It's gonna move all the way across. What if I did eight though? Um, the top two rows look okay, however, things start to look a little bit messed up for my subsequent rows, subsequent tracks. Okay. Let's dial that back to six. I'm pretty happy with that, but there's another way we can use these grid column starts and grid row starts. For instance, this is spanning three tracks across, spanning two tracks down. So instead of even using grid column end, I can write span three for three tracks, and then for my grid row start, I can do span two for two tracks. And I get that same basic look, that same basic layout. Maybe that's a little bit more descriptive. Instead of worrying about where it starts and where it ends, I was just letting it start at its natural position and saying where I wanted it to span to. So that's a pretty good way to go. But there's something else we can do too. We can name our grid lines. So let's see, what if for my second fractional unit, that's my second column, I'm gonna use square brackets there, and I'm gonna name this head L for head left. Let's assume that's a header section. And then for the sixth unit off to the right there, hmm, no, let's not do that one. Let's do this one right here. Square brackets, I'll do head R for head right. Now, to reference those, I can go to grid column start, and instead of span three, I can have it start at head L, and then I can do a grid column end at head R. And it's gonna still create that same basic look because that's where I've started and stopped those. Say, so, well, is that really doing anything? Well, yeah, we can find out easy enough. What if head R instead was all the way after my last column. By making that change, I can see that that cell is now spanning all the way across to those four tracks because I've used a specific name. Now, is that really advantageous? It could be, because let's say I had a big sidebar and I wanna refer multiple cells or multiple tracks to those particular um, grid line names. That could make my life a little bit easier when managing the key layout parts of my web page. Now you notice this one big cell is taking up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight former cells. So I've gone from eight to one, which means I've got seven extraneous cells thrown at the bottom. Well, I can go back to my HTML easy enough 
and delete one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those. I go back to my basic six by six grid layout, and then I can continue on with planning out where the other key sections of my web page are going to be. So that's all I'm going to leave you with for this one. And basically, I want you to start to experiment with these few new properties. Grid column start, grid column end, grid row start, grid row end. Don't forget, you can use the span keyword, but you can also name those grid lines for easier reuse. Thanks for hanging out with me.